welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. So uh, what have I been doing in the meantime? Well, I decided to uh, go down a different adventure and purchase myself a new toy. I got myself a uh, CNC router. And so today what we're going to do is unbox this thing, take inventory, have a look at it, talk about it a little bit, show you the table I built for it, and uh, then we'll get ready to assemble this thing. So hang in there, let's get this thing unboxed, and then we'll talk about it. So we got it out of the box sitting on tables. Whew. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to pull out our little assembly guide here. And on page five, we have uh, inventory sheet. And make sure that everything is included and it looks or it appears that it is. So we have, uh, of course, the Shape, Shape Oco assembly guide. We have what's called a sweepy, so this will connect to the bottom of the router. This will be for our dust collection. It has a little magnetic piece on here. That's good. X and uh, X axis, the right and left assembly, which we have left and a right. And next is a pre-assembled wiring harness box, which we have in here, which contains all the fasteners and everything we need to put this thing together. We also have the final assembly box, which is this one here. has all of our belts, clips, power modules, everything in that. Uh, XZ box, which is this one here. We have the Z Plus. And uh, we have a cross strap package, which I have sitting on the table here, and I'll show you here in a minute, along with our aluminum extrusions, our end plate package, and our MDF uh, base plate board. So, it appears that everything is here. I won't know until we pull everything out of the box, get it laid out, and uh, we start assembling. So, let me show you the little table that I made that we're going to set this on. So this will be the platform in which I'll be uh, assembling my CNC router. And the top is a 45 by 45, and I'm hoping that that's just about the right space. Uh, I just have 1 by 4s on the sides, made an L shape fasten everything together with screws and uh, put me a little table underneath for my vacuum cleaner and such and it's also on wheels so I'll be able to move this thing around the shop so let me get this stuff off of here we'll start unboxing things and uh, get it laid up and start working on putting this thing together Boom. all right now we'll just take a little closer look at our uh, inventory here from our final assembly bo box uh, they give a diagram of all the pieces and parts that are in that box as well as the description and I laid it out just like in the picture to make sure that I had all the pieces that are supposed to be in that box. So that's the final assembly uh, contents. Next is the X or the Y axis left and right. <laughs> so we have a left and a right assembly and uh, we'll just go ahead and keep the boxes handy. So when we get ready to assemble those, those are going to come in uh, useful. Next is the pre-assembled wiring harness box, and within that is uh, your wiring harness, drag chains. You've got all the supports, drag chain supports. Uh, you got your proximity switch and hardware, cable tie mounts, and we also have a riser board adapter uh, for the proximity switches. Uh, so everything's in that box. Next on our list is the XZ box, so we just want to make sure that all the components it says it has in the box are in the box so uh, that one's taken care of and then uh, I think last little piece will be our little sweepy so the little dust collector they call sweepy 
It's in, uh, included is a two piece upper and the lower and I think that's held in place by just a magnet it sticks right on there okay next we're going to inventory our aluminum rails and our base supports and our braces that go across so let's pull those out of the box get those set up on the table next on our list is the uh, aluminum extrusion you have an X and uh, two Y's and you have to pay attention to which one is Y1 and Y2 I went ahead and took the liberty of marking them. They show you on the manual which one has the holes for Y1 and which and where the placement of the holes is for Y2. We also have the end plates for left and right and we have the cross straps. So we're getting closer now, completing the inventory. One of the uh, items that I opted to purchase was the carbide trim router, which uh, comes complete with the router, has some collets, also some extra brushes and a couple of wrenches so everything is uh, pretty much set there you can also use Makita and a DeWalt router if you so choose I decided why not I'll just go ahead and uh, use what they provide and let's see there's two other little items that I got as options uh, the carbide 3D bit zero so a little aluminum block here that I can zero my z-axis on and uh, I think that'll come in handy. I also opted to purchase the uh, the maintenance kit. Let's see if I can't get this open here. Maintenance kit includes extra belts, wire ties, some wiring, uh, also some bearings and fasteners, and a little sticker. So we'll see. Uh, when or if I need to use all that at any time too soon but that's an option that I decided to use so if something went haywire I can get it repaired immediately and uh, not have to wait for any shipping so I believe that all of the items are pretty much accounted for and I've got them laying out on the table uh, I did order as an option the proximity switches which I haven't been able to locate and I'm hoping that they're either on the drag chain or already pre-assembled on our units so I've got to locate those if I don't find those then I'll have to send an email and try to get those sent the last thing that I uh, ordered as an option is the track table and so that has the aluminum track and the MDF board in between uh, that way you'll be able to lock down your uh, your work so I think we are ready to begin assembly everything is accounted for alright so the first step is to lay out your cross straps uh, right now they're about 12 inches apart and I've got them about as close together as I think I can get them and then we'll go ahead and grab one of the MDF we'll put it on here and then we'll put a couple of screws in it now they do come with uh, Allen wrenches that uh, are metric that you can uh, use to assemble this, but I bought me a set of T-handles here that I think are going to come in handy. So we're going to start here on the center, and we're going to go ahead and install these. And when we're tightening these down, we don't want to tighten them. We just want to turn them in until they stop. And then we'll come back later on when we square up the table. So that one's good. We won't put the uh, rear bolts in just yet. We'll go ahead and get the other MF MDF one here and we'll go ahead and put those screws on. Uh, same as this one. Next we'll attach the uh, end plates. So we'll just slide those under. started. Now we'll just repeat it for the other side and uh, remember don't tighten them just yet. Leave them loose and then uh, we'll come back and get those tightened up. Next is installing the end feet. So 
Uh, it's a nice little aluminum piece here. It's got a little piece of rubber on the bottom. And we're going to insert those into our end plates. And they recommend not lifting this any higher than you have to. So I have a little piece of block here that I'm going to lift up. Use that as a support. Put my block under here. And we'll just turn that foot until it's flush with the top of the end plate here. Now, if the legs are a little bit tight, trying to fasten those in by hand, they do give you a little wrench. It's a 13 millimeter, but I opted for a uh, real wrench. <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and get this last foot installed on here, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is getting our table level. So at this time, I went ahead and run a tape measure and uh, squared up the corners. Actually, I didn't really have to do much. Uh, both of them came out to exact measurement, and I turned the legs, got me uh, level. So I think my table's, for the most part, level. Nothing's tightened down, so things can still move, and uh, later on in the steps, we'll finalize all the squaring and leveling. So right now, that's where it sets. Okay, so the next step is going to be taking our three carriages and our concentric nuts are here on the back and they have an open and closed position. You can see that they're off center here and then we have, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little dimple on the nut itself. So what we want to do is turn that clockwise until that dimple is pointing up. And what that does is it spreads the wheels wide, and that's what we want. We want the widest position until we get it on the rail, and then we'll turn that nut until it's closed. And we can just, once the wheel stops by finger, turning it, and then we know we got it right. So we're going to take our 10 millimeter wrench, and we're going to put it here on our nut, and Turn that until it's facing up, and you don't want to turn it counterclockwise because then you take the risk of loosening the nut from the bolt. So if you go past your area, just go all the way around again. So anyway, that's what we want. We want the off-center to be here at the bottom, and we've got our little dimples on the top. So I've already done it to the uh, Z and also to the right Y assembly. So now we're ready for the next step, which is to assemble our Z axis. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our Z axis and we're going to install our Z motor. So in order to do that, we're going to take our Z axis, turn it upside down so we have these six standoffs pointing straight up. And then we'll take our Z motor, it has a little label on it, and you want those pointing down towards the idlers right here. Then we'll take the screws that came with the Z motor, should be four of them, should use a four millimeter Allen wrench, and then we'll just go ahead and tighten those down. Now on with the next step. So our next step is going to be taking our tramming plate and mounting our router mount on the uh, tramming plate. But before we do that, we have to identify something. There are four corner holes here, 
and three of them are the same size and one is just a little bit smaller. That will identify the front of the plate. Now I've already marked mine with a piece of tape and I used uh, calipers to identify the three larger holes and the small hole. You can also take the four screws that come with the tramming plate, line those up, those on there and you can feel the play in the three large holes and the small hole has very little play. So that small hole is going to be uh, facing out. So we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, router mount right here on the back. So let's do that as the next step. Remember the small hole is going to be facing out. It will be the upper left. So to install the router mount, we want to make sure our lettering is correct. Put that face down, and we're going to put one drop on each of the threads, and then one drop on each of the two screws, and that takes a 3 millimeter Allen wrench, and we'll go ahead and tighten the plate down. So let's go ahead and install one drop. Take our plate with the tape marked on it. We'll turn that upside down. Go ahead and put that into position. And we'll tighten those down.